We have extras here. that I wanted to incorporate molecular modeling into spectroscopy is so much of what we do in spec is answering questions and analyzing specific situations. In other words, sure, some of it is you have a completely unknown compound, but a lot of times you're asking questions about stereochemistry or molecular conservation that are directly relevant to your research project. And being able to tie computer-based molecular modeling into spectroscopy is really, really powerful and, and very valuable. The other reason I do this here is it's a tool that I think every organic chemist should have in his or her toolbox. It ties so much into both synthetic organic chemistry and biomolecular structure that it's something that one really should have. We can basically, in about one hour, with maybe a little bit of an exercise afterward, become reasonably proficient in molecular modeling, or more specifically, what's called molecular mechanics. And as I mentioned last time, because my, my license for PyMol uh, basically allows me to distribute it to my students, I thought this would be a nice opportunity to share with this with you. So what I want to do today is spend a few minutes giving a little, little lecture on what molecular mechanics is and the scope and limitations of molecular mechanics. Then I wanted to do a demonstration and show you a quick generation of, of a molecular model where you just watch. And then we'll do a little workshop where you'll go through and actually do this yourselves and then we'll have a homework assignment, and that should be enough to reinforce it. So the basic idea behind molecular mechanics is that one generates a conformationally realistic molecular model of a, a molecule and basically uses what's called a force field. What a force field is, is a collect collection of parameters. And you're already familiar with the concept, because this starts in sophomore organic chemistry. It is, for example, parameters for bond lengths. 
from the time you're a sophomore and certainly into the graduate level, you learn a carbon-carbon single bond wants to be about 1.5 angstroms, about 1.54 angstroms in length for an sp3, sp3 hybridized carbon. And so the force field knows that's the optimal length, and it'll treat your bond as sort of a harmonic potential as a spray. And if you have to distort it and stretch it a little bit, you'll pay an energetic price, like a Hooke's Law spring. We know about bond angles in the same way. A carbon-carbon, uh, sp3 hybridized carbon, wants to have 109.5 degree angles. And if you distort it a little bit, say like we did in cyclopentane or cyclobutane in today's class where we were talking about strained rings, we pay an energetic price. And that also becomes a harmonic potential. And so you know um, as well things about dihedral preferences. SP3, SP3 atoms bonded together want to have a standard conformation, right? From the beginning of soft organic chemistry, you learn that ethane wants to be staggered, and if it's eclipsed, you go up a sinusoidal curve and pay an energy price of about three kilocalories per mole for being eclipsed. And if you're a little bit off of an optimal 60 degree angle, you pay a little bit of an energetic price. There are also electrostatics incorporated. And we discussed this today in talking about bond dipoles. A carbonyl is polarized. There's a delta minus on the oxygen, a delta positive on the carbon. If you have another carbonyl and it has a delta minus and a delta plus, depending on their geometry, they can attract or repel each other. Other forces involve Van der Waals interactions. Atoms like to touch, but if they touch too hard, they pay an energetic price. If they touch just a little bit, it's favorable. That's a Van der Waals trick. And then there are other things, for example, like salvation. And so what molecular mechanics is doing is basically using a computer to move over a multi-dimensional energy surface to get to an optimum geometry that minimizes bond distortions in length and in angle and dihedral distortions and so forth. What molecular mechanics is excellent at is it's good for common structures and functional groups. In other words, parameters for bond lengths and angles and so forth have been well worked out for things like amides and ethers and aromatic rings and alkenes and amines and so forth, all the sorts of typical functional groups. What it's not good for is unusual arrangements of atoms, reactive intermediates and so forth. Often metals and so forth, let's say transition metals. And so if one wants to generate a realistic picture of species like these, like a biradical, or perhaps a very unusual functional group that's not something you'd find in a typical textbook, you would end up wanting to use other computational methods, specifically electronic structure methods.
such as those found in Spartan or Gaussian or Turbo. talk a little bit more about the concept of energy surfaces and so forth and specifically one concept that we have to be very very solid on what molecular mechanics is doing is moving us down an energy surface to get to what's called a local minimum And by local minimum, I mean moving down the energy surface until the, if you want to get technical, partial derivatives of energy with respect to each coordinate of motion are zero. In short, going to the bottom of an energy level. You, you understand this concept beautifully in two dimensions. And so let's, let's take this because you've had this built into what you've learned from so long. So let's take a look. I've drawn a Newman projection of gauche butane. And in this particular conformation, our dihedral angle for gauche butane is 60 degrees. And by contrast, you know anti-butane. I'll draw a Newman projection for it. anti-butane, our dihedral angle, beta is 180 degrees. So I could write, and you've seen since uh, for organic chemistry, diagrams that look something like this. If we plot our energy in kilocalories per mole versus our dihedral angle theta for butane, Go zero. I'm, gonna, I'm not much of an artist, as you may have noticed, so I'm going to put in put in a few tick marks to help myself. So I'm going to give myself a guideline here. Zero point nine. Another guideline here. and another guideline here and 4.5. And so if we look at the energy potential for butane as a function of theta, when we're fully eclipsed, when we're at a dihedral angle, we have an energy of 4.5 kilocalories per mole. As we rotate to gauche butane, we have an energy, a uh, relative energy of 0 0.9 kilocalories per mole. When we go to 120 degrees, we have an energy, again, we eclipse as we bring this methyl, eclipse with the hydrogen, we're at 3.5 kilocalories per mole. We rotate to 180, we hit a, a minimum of 0 kilocalories per mole, and then the whole thing repeats as we go around. And this, the energy surface looks something like this. It's basically like a cosine wave. Each of these points gauche butane, gauche plus butane, gauche minus butane, and anti-butane are all minima. They are all specifically local minima. They are lowest energy points in their locality. If we start near gauche butane, we move down the energy surface down to gauche butane. If we start near anti-butane, we move down the energy surface to anti-butane. This is essentially what molecular mechanics is doing 
with respect to all coordinates of bond lengths and angles and dihedral angles and so forth, you're moving down until you find a local minimum. And for a big and complex molecule, it's not trivial, although there are plenty of algorithms to do it, to get from here to here. To put it another way, this methyl group doesn't know, it doesn't know that it's even better to be over here than it is to be over here until it gets over the hill. It can't see that there's a deeper valley. We know because we've already studied the whole energy surface. But for big and complex molecules, it's tricky. So what molecular mechanics does is takes you to a local minimum, which means you need to engage your brain and think about global minima or think about um, or check out different local minima or use an algorithm to do so. So all we're going to be doing today is learning how to generate some local minima for molecules in which there really aren't a whole lot of conformational options. Let me put this into concrete terms, getting away from butane to things that maybe you're a little more familiar with, familiar to you, or at least a little more relevant to you. If I start with cyclohexane with an axial methyl group, that is a local minimum. There's another conformation in which the ring flips to put the methyl group equatorial, and we know that this is the global minimum. I'm going to put that in parenthesis. It's also a local minimum. As is the other axis of work. But without doing something specifically to flip from one conformation to the other, molecular mechanics is not going to automatically start here and get over here. Similarly, again, keeping to something reasonably familiar, if we start with both cyclohexane, boat cyclohexane is actually a high energy point, just like over here. If we start with boat cyclohexane, we'll work our way down to the next local minimum. The next local minimum is the twist boat. And so we'll go from here to here. Actually, technically, in certain circumstances, if you're right on the very top of a symmetrical point, you won't actually go down because your partial derivatives here with respect to, to all energies are zero. But virtually every case you have substitution. If you start over here, you'll end up dropping to the next local minimum. All right. With this basic knowledge, you will keep out of a lot of trouble with molecular mechanics because you won't make unrealistic expectations. And so with that, that said, any questions? With that said, I want to run through a little exercise here, a little demonstration. Now, PyMol is primarily developed as a visualization program. And the fellow who developed this basically kept adding to it and making it more and more sophisticated. At one point, the program grew a lot in size. And I sent him an email. I said, hey, what did you add to this? And he's like, oh, I built in built in a whole force field. It incorporates what's called the Merck molecular force field, which is actually a very good one for modeling a whole bunch of structures. There are a number of different windows here. We have a controlling window here. If you get geeky, there's a command line up here. Um, we have a builder module here and visualization modules. There's a region here where you get different ways of displaying molecules. You can 
show things, you can hide things, you can label things, you can color things, you can do various actions. So A, S, H, L, C. This little matrix is sort of your guidepost here. Your, the, the mouse does a lot of things in time It can rotate, it can zoom, it can rotate about bonds, it can rotate parts of the molecule. And by a combination of keys and mouse clicks, you can do various things. For example, if you go ahead and you use the, um, well, I'll show you in the build rather, rather than here. So let me, let me click on. There are two modes. There's viewing and editing. And if you, in the editing mode, for example, go ahead and um, use control and the right mouse button, you can rotate about a bond. So if I have ghost butane and I said, oh, no, I want to start with anti-butane, you can rotate about the bond. Your left mouse does a lot of the selecting. Part of the thing that's frustrating is a lot of the knowledge doesn't really reside in your head for this. It's literally just in your hands, and so it's getting used to, to doing things on this. Um, the other thing that's frustrating is the one thing that the program desperately, desperately, desperately needs is an undo. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't have it. So the one thing you want to get in the habit of is just every time you do something sizable and you, you don't want to lose your work, save, give a file name and, and save the file. So I'm going to do this. Don't, don't follow along with me. Just watch me this time. You'll have a chance to, uh, to, to do stuff on your own. I'm going to go ahead and build, build Morphe. So I'm in the editing mode, and I'm going to the builder. And when I go to the builder, it gives me a whole bunch of templates. And most of the building can be done with a template. If I want to build an alkyl chain, I can build it up from methanes. If I want to start with a benzene ring, if I, I can start with a benzene <coughs> ring. If I want an ingate ring or a naphthalene ring, I can have that. In the case of morphine, I'm going to start with a cyclohexane, which is a nice starting point. So I just click, and you notice now it says some things here. It says create as a new object. And that means um, if I now click, I can go ahead and create as a new object. If not, I can attach to an existing atom, but I don't have anything yet as an existing atom. So I've created a cyclohexane. My right mouse button is the zoom, and so I'm zooming here. My left mouse button is rotate, and it's a little weird. If I get out here, my left mouse button is a Z rotate. So I'm going to be building for morphine, which is on your handout. I'm going to start by building the ring, the heterocycle that has the amine in it. So I'll just go ahead and start with the cyclohexane. I'll put in an equatorial methyl. I've now gone to the builder, click to attach the methyl. I'm going to click two times. Now I'm going to replace this atom with nitrogen here. And so that's the basic, basic structure of the first ring of morphine. At this point, because this thing has a very pernicious tendency to, uh, to go ahead and lose itself, I'm just going to give this thing a, a name, and I'll call it morphine. All right, at this point, I want to put in the phenyl group of morphine. Again, morphine's on your handout. So I'm going to put in the phenyl group. I'll get the phenyl tool. And again, I've got to remember to click on it twice. Pick location to, uh, actually, I guess I know. Click location to attach phenyl. Here's the phenyl. The middle mouse button or scroll wheel allows me to bring the molecule down. If you're having trouble seeing, in this form, because we're getting no depth, there are a couple of things I like to do. One of them is you can show as sticks, uh, I'm sorry, show as sticks. And another thing you can do is turn the display 
quality to maximum quality. And so I'm just going to zoom in. So that gives us a little bit of depth. I don't really need to, and I now want to join, add a carbon atom here and connect over to here to make the second part of the morphine framework. I can just add a carbon here and then form a bond over to this carbon. But in order to, at this point in the exercise, just show you a little more, I'm going to show you the rotate torsion function. So at this point, you notice in order to pick a torsion bond, I'm going to use the control and the right mouse button. So the control and the right, ah! And of course, I didn't save. As I said, the program can be a little bit, a little bit annoying. Depending on what you want to do, you can either just delete, nibble away. All right, now it says pick atom to delete. I'm going to say done. That's gone away in the upper left-hand corner. Pick torsion bond is control and right mouse button. Whoops, I'm back to the viewing mode. Whoops, what am I doing wrong here? Ah, before. No. Oh, it's simply. Pick torsion bond is simply use control and right mouse button. So I use the control and the right mouse button. And now you notice it says control and torque and left mouse button is rotate fragment. If I click on the top, it's going to rotate about the fennel. If I clicked on the bottom, it would rotate about the cyclohexane. For me, it's easier to rotate about the bottom. As I said, this is largely superfluous here, but I wanted to demonstrate that function to you. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go back to Delete, and it is, whoops, now I've got myself all flustered. Atoms, delete, delete, okay. Now I'm going to go back and pick, pick location to attach methyl. As I said, it's a little bit of an annoying pro program. And the last thing I'm going to do is create a bond between these two guys. Bonds create. Left mouse button is the standard thing. All right, now at this point, I've had a molecule that's a little bit distorted. I'm going to go ahead and minimize. Remember, that means move down that energy surface. We're going to optimize our lengths and angles primarily in this part. And they call it clean here. Clean is just their way of implementing uh, molecular mechanics minimization. So I'll click on that, and you can watch what happens. And you notice it pulls together the slightly distorted bond lengths and angles become optimal. And at this point, I think I've said we'll call this morph B. Save session. Oops. If I save session, it's overwritten morph A, but that's okay at this point. Save as. All right. The next thing I want to do is to build out the next ring of morphine, which is going to be a cyclohexene ring. So I will add a vinyl group. That's a carbon double bond carbon over here. And at this point, I'm going to just add some methyl groups. And we now have six that are going to make up our cyclohexene ring. So I, again, I'm going to create a bond. It up. All right, and there's our there's our cyclohexene. So I will now save save session as we'll call that morph C. All right, to finish up our morphine structure, now it's pretty easy. I have an alcohol, I have an ether, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll change. So this becomes an alcohol, this becomes an ether, 
forming a bond down to here, so I'll do bond create, click, click, and one more alcohol, and I have one. All right, so again, we have a distorted structure, and now I just do my final minimization. And we'll call this, I will save it as morphine. Because I've already done this on my computer, I'm kind of overwrite it. I want to demonstrate a couple of display options here. So I've already shown you that we can go ahead and show sticks or hide uh, or hide sticks. So maybe for this mo model, maybe I don't want um, I don't want to show my double bonds. I just want to show the confirmation of the molecule. Maybe I'm interested in some NOEs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've already gone ahead and remember I said make my display. Um, quality, maximum quality, so it already is. Let me get it into a nice confirmation where you can see the cyclohexane ring, see the uh, pyridine ring in a good confirmation. Let me make it a little bit bigger with my right mouse button and go ahead and maybe uh, I'll make the background white. Let's say I want to put this into a paper or into a dissertation. And then the last thing may be to make it a little prettier. There's a ray tracing algorithm here. And you notice it does a little bit of, little bit of rendering and so forth. And so at this point, maybe I'll go ahead and save the image as a PNG file that I can put into, into another document. Last thing I'll show you, just in case you like it, is under the actions, there are some presets. There's also a nice little ball and stick model, if you prefer that. And again, I'll ray trace that. And it make it nice and pretty. And save the image as just a ball and stick. All right, well that's a old demo that's going to make you proficient. What I'd like to do at this point is to repeat this slowly and for you to come along with me on this and for Ryan to provide some support. So why don't you go ahead. I'm going to go and reopen my window here. And... <laughs> All right, so why don't you at this point join me and bring your laptops up. <laughs> Ryan, why don't you uh, check out and see if people are okay. So I'm going to pop in. Is everyone okay? And the, the Mac people okay? The X11 hybrid is all running for everyone? <laughs> all right. So get familiar with your three button mouse and we can go into the builder mode. Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's start. And you can go and choose a cyclohexane and create it as a new object. And maybe make it a little bit bigger. You get yeah, in trouble. Really yeah, you can just um, <laughs> clean, uh, you can just go ahead and clear. Uh, a couple of ways you can do it. One way is you can do. Um, I think you can do it with the cycle. Oh, I think yeah. I think you can go ahead and. You notice it was still on delete. Yeah, you had to double click. This is one one reason why saving is very, very useful here. 
<laughs> and if if you're having trouble at this point uh, and your neighbor isn't having trouble neighbors I urge you to help your neighbors I just need to get that yeah. double bond right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
If you did morphine, and you can do strychnine, and if you want me to to check your structures, you can email them to me. Is that what we do? Well, right. The homework assignment has you hand in printouts, but if you want some feedback on your morphine or strychnine, you can email it to me as an attachment. I'll take a quick look and let you know. I don't want to. I don't want to say. I'll do that sometime. What? I'll do that sometime. You're gonna, you're gonna, yeah, looks like with it, without being installed, you're, you're out of it. There we go. So I made, I remade my morph B structure, and at this point, I'm gonna make my, add my double bond again. Yeah, should be the right one. Oh, you using? Oh, I got this too. And add a couple of methyls. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I think that's the center. Middle center. Yeah, yeah, otherwise you have to the structure, you have to hold control, you have to hit the wall. Is there any select each one or no? Yeah, um, that I think is actually control. Yeah. 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 All right, now the bad news is once you go to ball and stick, I don't know an easy way to undo it, so save your, that's okay. Save your structure first, and then when you reopen it, you'll get it the old way. Under so actions, to see if I get, uh, so the question is how do you get ball and stick? Under actions, A, for the whole structure, you go to preset. If I wanted to make this, ball and stick. What? Oh, no, you can't do that way? And if you just want to go ahead and so do it do as it. It be six sticks like this, you can do sticks and, and you can do, I always like to do quality Oh, very nice. Quality. But that's, you're going to go, you're going to get into trouble as far as stereochemistry goes. Really? If you don't build it if piece by piece. If I, don't, if I clean it, will it not adjust? Because three dimensionally, you see this flat right there. But if right. you rotate it, they might be all space. If they're not covalently linked, they'll adjust, but it's going to be only based on the Van der Waals interaction. You should start by like each part. You should link them. So where are you at here? I was trying to do this, then maybe do oh, the two, strict add nitrogen. and then I had nitrogen and then create oh, okay. okay, you could you could do that. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead just delete them and create bonds. Yeah, but well, in this case, the way that you have it, you have to bring this one forward. But it, it'll be okay if you delete, if you attach them now, you'll be fine. Right. Now, mind you, you had it in here, so you actually uh, had it, but that's okay. Oh, you're right, yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. Use, use create and create a bond. 
that would be right here. And, and the right there. Yeah. So it looks like you're going to have one too many atoms, but uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, you're right. Oh, sorry. But yeah, you can do create a bond. We can delete this like all of this. Yeah, yeah, just create a bond. That'll be fine. So we'll cumbersome, but that's nothing. Nothing matter for somebody beginning. I don't know if it create. No, I, Click, click, and try click create now. Oh, maybe it does. I, it I don't think it does. I don't think you're right. I don't think it does in terminal there. No. Huh. Yeah. Okay. You get issues that way. Okay. So we'll go down. We got those here. Yeah. Oh, no. Although if you were building it and you cut it apart, uh -huh. mm -hmm. it still sees it as one. Oh, you do have a double bond to hydrogen. You made that's. Um, Make that so into like a carpet. You do the like thing, right? Which kind of carpet? You can still reattach it. Now, do we do two new objects? Now, you have to You have a bond of hydrogen to hydrogen. Don't worry about deleting the hydrogen, it's just create a bond between the hydrogen and the hydrogen. And when you're not doing anything, you're there. There you are. All right, now you just need your oxygen. Oh, I was just trying to come up with it. Yeah, you're right. 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 Yeah, you and let's go to quality maximum. Oh, probably the same yeah, same 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 too. Uh, display quality and maximum. Other templates. Oh, I think mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, now you've got your ring master <laughs> ready training. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what you do. How did you do that? You can do, if I'm not mistaken, you can export out of Angela in a certain uh, file format and it'll take it up in file yeah, more. But it doesn't do stereochemistry very well. Yeah, you made it. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. You're it's stereo not, not the best option. I'm just sure. You're right. 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 So the good news is what you can do, that hydrogen should be sinking down. I think it should be sinking so what you need to do is delete this. Is basically what's the best way? Best way to delete this oxygen, put the oxygen here, put hydrogen back here, and then you Yeah, you made the. You made a really bad diastereo. What if you mess up your stereo? Well, I'll just help you one by one. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we can do it. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, sticks and go to display quality maximum so I can see it better. Yeah. Maximum quality. No maximum quality. Maximum quality. There you go. Now I can see it. Those two are sticks. Yeah, you're you're perfect. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's no force field that can turn it into save God knows what's going on. I think you also you can also read um, I would nibble away at that and rebuild. Yeah, I know the I think what's happening God knows just delete the app so delete and you'll go delete the app so you just nibble nibble all those I have a question. Sorry. You may need to. Yeah, you may have to. Okay, so on the mouse, on the small mouse, do a space color. Yeah, it's just like deleting. Oh, okay. Taking a bomb. That's just what's happening. Yeah, that's what happened. Something is going on. Yeah, that's what happened. 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 Uh, they're there, it simply is a show. You go ahead and just let you show balance so they don't recognize them. Yeah, that's the same. Maybe it's HD. It's recognizing them based on the distance. You do, yeah. So on PDB is a more universal. So, so this is a this is a good question that was asked. So the question is, what's PDB and what's what am I talking about with PSE? PSE is the proprietary file format for PyMole that has all of the information about how to render the molecule in it. PDB is this universal file format for atomic coordinates that has lots of people's atomic coordinates has, that's compatible with lots and lots of different software. So the reason I asked you to do PDB is later on we're going to be transferring some files to a more sophisticated program that will allow some, di some uh, coupling constants to be easily calculated and I wanted you to get to get the feeling for outputting in that file format. Well, I'm going to finish up my molecule here, and if anybody wants to email me, there's to look at. I'll be happy. I'll be happy. We probably, I guess, we're coming to the end of our discussion section here, so I probably should be willing yes. to let you go, but. But if anyone wants to email me, I'll give you give you a quick feedback. Yeah, here's here's my redo of redo of more feedback. You know, I'll put it into a redo of more feedback. You can give it a feedback. Yeah. I would just delete that right there, the CH2. Yeah, that's what I was going it looks like nobody nobody has emailed me yet, but if you want to send me send me one, I will give a quick critique. We are done. Yes, if you, if you want to stick around, you can, but we are we are officially officially done. And if, what's that? So there's I think this is due with next week's homework set. So and if you want if you want.